This is... We... Help! Artemia. So you... Artemia hunt. That I'm here he has ordered? Artemia obey. I see. You have... How Artemia live, not Artemia not tell sister. How sister only si I understand. Artemia hunt all. I said enough. Nothing will run. <sighs> Has. Women are being tricked and captured in this world as well. We must set them... Ah. It's the Red Old Man! Now that is unfortunate. You could have at least called me dashing, don't you think? You do realize you are trespassing. I... We know what you are up to. You must stop... Oh, do you now? My pretty little thing. Baramort. What? Well, knock me over with a feather. You told us you... I did. Just a second. Have I met you somewhere before? No. I believe you have yet to make our acquaintance. Hmm. Feigning ignorance, are we? You use cologne containing... Well, well. Isn't... You do realize the women I woo get something out of this... T My techniques are truly... You feel... Oh, I thought I recognized you from somewhere. You seem intent on disparaging my little operation. But I'll have you know the Council of Six has given full approval. What? Don't you see? Your father has personally condoned this operation that you call filthy. <sighs> I fail to see how it warrants criticism from his own bluff. Have I made myself clear? Good. Now off you go, children. I have much work to do here. We are not going anywhere. We'll not turn a blind eye to this wickedness. Oh, so that is how you... It looks like I'll have to teach you. Since you're clearly... Let's... Yeah, we know. Captain of the Blood Rose Legion. The Red Mage. Old Man De Rosa. Whoa. Hold on there.
What is it? Oh. Does it bother you that your father approved of that man's plans? Yes. Not to sound like Lord De Rosso, but don't you think you are underestimating him? When we obtained the report he had written earlier, I took down the details in my journal. The Red Mage has stopped at nothing to claw his way up the ranks of the Eternian forces. You should read them again sometime. I will. Should we perform? I think. Wait. Ah, oh, that's another creature. You're the. the hang of it, but time to get s yes. Are you okay, Anya? Yes. I need it. Oh, look at your vestal garb, Anya. It's all threadbare. Huh? Oh, what should we do? It has seen a lot of use of late. Let's go and ask the sage to repair it.
Hmm? Ah, I thought I heard something. This place draws few visitors, I fear. And who might you be? I am Agnes Oblige, Vessel of the Wind. Ho oh, ho! Lit my! You were scarce more now, look at you. <laughs> Why the long face? If there is anything this big. He hasn't changed a bit. Sage, Agnes's Vestal Garb has become threadbare. Oh, her Vestal Garb, you say? Hmm, yes. Sage, do you remember me at all? Hmm? <laughs> yes, I remember you well. This is the third time, after all. But perhaps you might call it the first. Still, I remember you all too well. The third time? What do you... Of course. Let me put it this way. Which world are you from, Agnes? What? <sighs> well, you'd better come inside. Now then, I was about to pour some tea for us. But I fear this may not be the time for sitting quietly with a hot brew. See? Are you aware I was a founder of the organization that became the Duchy of Eternia? Yes. Then you know of Lord De Rosso? <sighs> and are you familiar with the circumstances that led Lord De Rosso and me to build that organization? Not to worry. Well then, Agnes. You must decide who is your most trustworthy ally. Then travel to the nearby cave with them. You will find it to the southwest of here. Once inside, I will tell you all I know. I will also give you your vestal garb. You should understand your situation better. I shall go on ahead. I would advise you to heed my... You must bring only one ally with you. Your other companion should wait outside the cave. It seems the sage knows something of our predicament. But why can only two of us go... Who knows what that old man is thinking? Who do you think I should choose? Well, I guess... You have to make your own choice, Agnes. Remember the sage's words. You have to decide who you trust most. Do I count as well? I'm going with Agnes either way. Wait, I think it should be me. You need a man who knows how to look after a woman. I would die for you, Agnes. <sighs> of course, I would die for you too, Idea. So I play second fiddle to her, huh? Whatever. The jealousy of a woman spurned is so endearing. Oh, shut up, ring a bell. I'm not jealous at all. As calm as ever, I see. It would have been nice to see you blush, at least. What am I to do? Uh, like I... <laughs> no. Can I see you outside, Tiz? Huh? Oh, sure. Hey! Don't mess up, lover boy. What? Stop giving me a hard time. What about me? <sighs> so, uh, what is it? Do you remember what I said to you right around the time we met, Tiz? I said I would like you to join me. Yes, I remember. 
And you have stayed at my side this whole time, through journeys far and wide. So, I think, I would like you to be the one to come with me. Will you do it? I feel the same. Huh? I remember the promise I made. I'll never forget it. Not till my dying day. I've come this far with you. I've stuck with you until now. You will always be a ray of hope to me. Tis. So, uh, I guess what I'm trying to say is... I'd be honored to go with you. Thank you. It seems I have come to trust you more than any other since that day. Tis a shame, Agnes, but Tis has a kind heart, and I know he will take good care of you. Tis, I am counting on you to escort Agnes with the utmost care. I don't think he needs any advice from you, Ringabout. It's not fair! I thought I was your perfect, and now you're leaving. I am sorry, Airy. I hope you can understand. Stop acting like a brat and give them a proper seeing off, Airy. Go on, get going. We'll be back. Take your time. you are. Ah, so this is the one you have chosen. I envy him. You make a fine pair. Were I a thousand eight hundred and eighty years younger, I would gladly have taken your hand in his stead, I guess. A thousand eight hundred and eighty? understand what I meant when I said it was the first time we had met? 
<clears throat> you are not originally of this world. That is why we meet for the first time. Yes. Sage, earlier you said this may be the third time we have come in contact. What did you mean by that? Your only memory of me is when you were brought here by the previous Vestal. Correct, Agnes? That's right. I came with the Mother Vestal and Olivia when I was but a young girl. However, I have met another who looked exactly as you do now. What? It was a very long time ago. More than 1,800 years, in fact. 1,800 years? Just how old are you, Sage? Me? I have lived almost 1,900 years. 1,900 years? No cause for surprise. Lord De Rosso is 500 years my senior. We were once mortal enemies, he and I. I was High Inquisitor of the Crystal Orthodoxy. He was an immortal who led those seeking to thwart us. We crossed swords on the field of battle dozens of times. In our final battle, the fighting went on for over a hundred days. A true struggle to the death. With both forces decimated, the two of us met in combat, each determined to land the killing blow or die trying. At that moment, an angel appeared before us. This wounded angel was a beautiful young woman who looked exactly like you, Agnes. Both Lord De Rosso and I were mesmerized, and before we knew it, we cast our swords aside and went to her aid. She had lost her light, and her wings were broken and severed. We knew she was beyond saving. We were only with the angel a short time. To Lord De Rosso and I, who mark our lives in centuries, it seemed little more than an instant now. But this moment changed both of our lives dramatically. With the last of her fading strength, she spoke to us. Of the crystal secrets and of their dangers. Dangers? I was a man of the cloth, and Lord De Rosso was one who opposed my religion. The truths we learned that day shook the very foundations of all we had both believed in. What did the angel tell you? The crystals have existed since well before both the orthodoxy and the old faith. The vestals do not draw the favor of the crystals by right. This title was merely given by those of the faith to ones who had this gift. Originally, it was thought that mankind should not come in contact with the crystals. Attitudes towards the crystals only changed among the people after the teachings of crystallism spread. What do you mean that we should not come in contact with them? Unleashing the power of the crystals without due care can destroy the borders, opening the door to the harrowing. There have been warnings about this since before recorded history. The angel confirmed there was truth to these warnings. What is this harrowing? I have spent the last 1,800 years trying to find out, but as yet, I am still in the dark.
the true nature of the harrowing is shrouded in mystery. Is the great chasm that opened in Kaldisla not the harrowing? The great chasm is merely an omen of it. It was one of the events the angel spoke of. I cannot say if the harrowing results from the great chasm opening up, drawing in darkness, then spewing it forth, or it may point to the tainting of the seas, the wind stopping, the volcanoes erupting. In a previous world, we awakened the four crystals and calmed the fury of nature. Then we summoned the holy pillar to close the great chasm. They have acted in the belief that what you did would help. However... However? The path you have taken to this point aligns perfectly with the path to the harrowing prophesied by the angel. The path to the harrowing? Do you plan to awaken the crystals again? If so, you would do well to heed what I have said. Always question how the actions you take will affect the world around you. We will. Thank you for hearing me out. It is a remarkable resemblance, Agnes, you and the angel. Speaking with you has brought the memories of 1800 years ago back as vividly as if they were yesterday. Sage. <laughs> At this rate, I shall be compelled to clasp you to my breast and plant a kiss upon your lips. I shall now set forth on a journey. You have filled me with the passion of youth for the first time in many years. Why do you look upon me with such a piteous gaze? I may have lived 1900 years, but I am not ready to lay down and die yet. You two youngsters should go back to your friends. Here, I have repaired your Vestal Guard. Thank you, Sage. Thank you very much. I wish you good health, Agnes. Hmm. What do you think of the Sage's story, Tiz? To be honest, I'm even more confused than before. I have to agree. I get the feeling he has not told us the full story. But why would he leave us in the dark? He either did so for good reason, or because there was something he was unwilling to share. <sighs> either way, he sure is an old lech, huh? You are not wrong there. Anyway, let's go meet up with the others. surprised. He and I did have a few things in common, to be sure. That's enough out of you, Ringabelle. 